Hey everybody, welcome back. So if this is your first time visiting my channel, please go ahead and click on subscribe and also click on the bell to receive all the updates and activity on my channel. So essentially this is part two in diagnosing the hand warmers on your snowmobile and why they don't work. Um, in part one, we essentially we looked at the schematic and we checked for resistance on the heating element and source voltage. And I pretty much walked you through everything that you need to check before you go out and buy parts. So went down to my Polaris dealer this morning, picked up the new heating element. And what we're gonna do is <clears throat> we're gonna check the resistance on the circuit, I'm sorry, on the heating element and compare it to the schematic and what it should be. And then we'll plug it in and we'll check it with a infrared uh, heat gun and see if we were correct on our diagnosis. So without further ado, why don't we go ahead and review what we talked about in part one and see how we did on our diagnosis. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about this real quick. Um, we went through this in detail in part one, so we're gonna just review, review it real quick. So on the hand warmer itself, you have three legs going in. You have a ground wire, which is brown. You have the first leg, which is a dark blue with a red tracer, and then you have dark blue, all right? So on the hand warmer, on leg number one, there's gonna be a resistance of 13 ohms. And on the second leg, there's gonna be a resistance of 21 ohms. On the original hand warmer that's currently on the sled now, we determined we had an open circuit on the, on the leg of 21 ohms, and the leg of 13 ohms was fine. So we checked that using a multimeter set to the ohm scale. This, this leg was fine. This leg proved out to be an open circuit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the multimeter with the um, the new heating element, and essentially we're gonna do the same thing on for checking for resistance on it, and just to verify our diagnosis procedure is correct. All right, so we have new the new heating element. So we're we're gonna stick it in the ground, and looking at the meter, this leg is gonna be a resistance of 13 ohms. All right, so it's a little more than 13 ohms. So then we go to the second one. It should have at least 21 ohms of resistance. And it does. So essentially, you know, going back to the original part one, we knew that this leg was open. And essentially this leg is actually responsible for the heat on high. So even though this one was still good um it's still there's an open circuit back to ground and um, um that's why it doesn't work so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it up to the sled we're gonna plug it in and then um we'll we'll start it and then we'll use an infrared heat gun to basically shoot the uh the the temperature on it and we'll watch it rise as, as the sled warms up so why don't we go ahead and do that now all right so the new element is plugged into the sled so what we're gonna do it what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this infrared heat gun all right, so the temperature of the element right now, it's 40 degrees, okay? So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna start the sled and we'll uh, give it a little throttle to get it up to 12 volts and uh, we'll watch the temperature rise on the element and then we'll see what the max temperature registers on. All right, so after running it for a couple minutes, it went all the way up to 200 degrees, and you can look at the max temperature. So th there's two two schools of thought on this. Um, I could either cut the grip off and then just uh, put it on a new grip. I actually did order a new grip while I was down at the Polaris dealer. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm actually going to use a heat gun, and I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to see if I can actually pull this off without cutting it and uh, go from there. So as far as the, the the bar hooks, this is just held on by an Allen screw. Uh, so we're gonna take that off first and then we'll attack this with a heat gun and go from there. Right now it's already kind of loose on the bar. So I'm pretty optimistic that I'll, I'll be able to get it off. As far as getting it back on, who knows, we'll see. All right, so after about five minutes, I managed to get the, uh, the original grip off and the element off. Um, what you wanna do is before you uh, go to put the new grip on, what you wanna do is you need to get all the adhesive off the bar. 
and you know you can use WD-40, you can use Goo Gone or, or something else. Um, I'm actually using this stuff right here, Arctic FX Adhesive Remover. Um, I actually had this left over uh, when I did the Snowville wrap on this sled. Um, this stuff actually works great. Um, you just spray it on and it liquefies the adhesive in about 30 seconds and you take a microfiber towel and it comes right off. Makes it short work of a dirty job. Um, <clears throat> so what you have to do to get the new element on, you gotta separate the throttle, uh, not the throttle block, but the uh, control block, but essentially there's four screws and then it's it basically separates and then you know put the uh the wiring on for the uh well the wiring through for the element and then you can put the control block back on so this is actually uh held on by uh an adhesive strip this yellow part needs to be removed um so once you uh remove that paper you know you're really committed so you want to make sure that your surface is nice and clean and, and there's no junk on it um, and go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove the uh, the, um, the the uh, the backing paper, and then I'm gonna use a heat gun again. I'm gonna heat up the bar. So when uh, we do go ahead and stick it, it's gonna stick. Because right now the, the the bars are cold, and uh, so with the heat gun it'll just make it stick that much better. All right. So now we're at the point where we're getting ready to put the the grip back on the bars. Um, as far as adhesive, there are products out there as far as like grip glue and stuff like that. What I've used in the past is I've just used some quick, cheap black spray paint. And again, you're just using um, a little bit just to coat the, the element and to really help get the grip back on. And once the paint dries, it will really make the grip stick to the element and um, it will never rotate on the bars. So that being said, why don't we go ahead and get this done and uh, wrap it up. All right, so using a little paint trick, you know, we uh, got the grip right on there with no issues. Managed to save the old grip, which is good. Put the uh, the bar end back on, made the connection, and essentially that's it. So uh, again, as you saw, this is very basic to do. Not that many tools required. Um, anybody can do this. Don't bring this down to your dealer. To have them do it all they're gonna do is take money out of your wallet and then less money on snowmobiling all right so if there's any questions comments concerns go ahead and leave them in the comments box i'd love to hear from you um if you liked the video give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw go ahead and subscribe i'd love to have you part of my community as always thanks for watching have a great day see ya bye